Uh, let's go see Renard. Renard? In my seat? Yeah. r and M. Is this me? Yeah, you're a I was Renard. Okay. Oh, I don't think I can reach the decibels that I did for Mousy before. Hear a different voice. <clears throat> <clears throat> visitors, Monsieur Wolf, visitors! I feel like that's even higher. <laughs> yeah, probably. I just, I can't, like, there's like a spot in my vocal cords that just doesn't trigger right now. I guess I can skip past it. Fair. Really, Falcon, what do you hope to accomplish in this sleazy back alley establishment? Sleazy? Madame, my back alley office is perhaps a little cluttered and eclectic, but I resent the accusation of sleaze. Um, maybe I should do the introductions? Monsieur Voup, uh, this is Madame Bumot, a uh, um, friend of mine. Madame, this is... Lina Rupiz, private investigator at your service. It is a pleasure to meet you, madame. Ah, that's the wick. I'm sure you have some pressing question to ask, Falcon, but before we get started, there is something I must tell you. Monsieur Spurrison dropped by earlier. He informed me of your situation. Spurrison, is he alright? Oh, yes, now working with Spectre Velarty. Attempting to unravel the double plot. Just as I thought, it appears that your lackey has solidified his position as a traitor to the Second Republic, Falcon. Perhaps, perhaps not. Ferguson doesn't strike me as a person who sides with any ideology. But you know, he asked me the most peculiar question. Would you like to know what it is? <coughs> no, I'll pass. Of course. Such information is quite valuable. It would cost, say, 30 francs. Yeah. 33. Just barely. Should yeah, I'll pay it. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, yeah, I know how it works. Uh, here's your money, monsieur. Okay, very good. So, on to the question. Sparrowson asked if you were the Viridian killer. One responsible for the random bombings during the July Revolution 18 years ago. Why on earth would he ask that? Perhaps the inspector had been telling him stories. So, what did you tell him? Truth, of course. That is, that I have no idea who the Viridian killer is. That I knew it couldn't possibly be Falcon. Oh, and how do you know that I'm not the Viridian killer? Oh, go on, please. You're a semi-drunk, bumbling oaf, not a ruthless killer. Anyway, I started my own investigation into the Viridian killer. It's fascinating stuff. Apparently, he was seen in multiple places at once, which leads some to believe that he was actually more than one person. Huh. Why they call him, or should I say them, the Viridian Killer? Mm, Viridian is a greenish color, isn't it? Uh, no, I don't have a clue. Crescent Killer would be a much cooler name. Because he's on the road to Viridian City. <laughs> it appears that no one knows the origins of the name leads me to suspect that he, or indeed they, chose their own name. This is all fascinating, truly fascinating, but perhaps we can return to the conversation to why we're here. Of course, Monsieur Ropes is. We've heard that you've investigating the murder at Les Halles. Oh, that was me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of course, right. Mr. Whoops, uh, we hear that you are investigating the murder at Les Halles. I was. 
that victim was a friend of Mousy's. I was like, wait, why is that open? <laughs> More of an acquaintance, really? Well, we want to know how you managed, if you managed to uncover anything. Uh, did you find any leads, any juicy clues? Not as such. It's quite the peculiar case. Did you hear that the murder of one eye patch? I I did. You know what that implies, don't you, Falcon? You only know of one police officer, or indeed one person who wears a one eye patch. <laughs> just one person. He only knows of one person. Okay. Do you have to pick them? First page. Trust Volardi. Yeah. The inspector. But be right, uh, you wouldn't describe me as a murderous man, would you, Monsieur Wu? Murderous? I don't know. Certainly passionate about finding the Viridian killer. Who's to say that he wouldn't kill to, in the pursuit of his arch enemy? Falcon, I want to solve this mystery as much as you two, but time is pressing and we have other matters to attend to. We must take our leave. See Un Understood. Until next time, Monsieur Volp. Goodbye and good luck, Monsieur Falcon. It's a pleasure meeting you, Madame. Uh, Monsieur Wolf? That lioness looked pretty angry. Is this revolution going to end in blood, Monsieur Wolf? Just like in 1930s? 1830s. 1830? <laughs> Ellipses. A new day. Okay. The Palais Royale. Just look at the disgusting den of fat cat bourgeois and hypocritical politicians. King is probably in there as we speak. Probably sitting in his high chair stuffing his bloated face with cake and wine while he boasts about being the perfect citizen king. Did you come here just to moan about the king? No, I've come to assess the potential battleground. The day of the rebellion, I might order Pietro to set up Pietro Piero to set up a barricade over there. What do you think? There, right outside the Palais Royal. Of course, a place for a defensive garrison. Gather furniture from nearby buildings, build a wall, position rifles to fend off the police. I was right. It would serve as an ideal location to launch our assault on the palace. On the palace. Uh, there's a new revolution. <clears throat> So, uh, you weren't throwing empty words in the tavern, you actually do intend on dragging the king out of the palace through violence. Of course, he will never abdicate on his own volition. If I want to see bloodshed, Falcon, it's necessary, it's inevitable. We have to be realistic, there's no way to bring change to a country without using violence, is there? I think there are ways. I think there are ways. Look back, the violent moments of history, the executions, the wars, the bloody revolutions. Who said that the country could not be overturned just through the chance of the people? 
pacifist revolution. Interesting. I would love for such a thing to be possible. Maybe it would be better to avoid building the barricade. At least until it's clear that violence is inevitable. That's good. Uh, that's a good compromise, madame. The odds. This is it, Falcon. This is the day we make our stand. Everything is coming together as we speak. Fontaine is gathering the protesters at the Place de la Concorde. Pierre is making preparations to build an armored barricade near the Palais Royal. Just a precaution, you understand. The only question that remains is, are you ready? Are you ready? Nope. No. Not at all. No? Nope. Nope. To be perfectly honest, no, I'm not ready at all. You want me to prosecute the king and prime minister if and when you drag them from the palace, right? Oh, I have no time to prepare, no evidence on hand. This whole trial is going to be one big fiasco. You're too fixated on the formalities, Falcon. This revolution will succeed and those in power will see justice. That's all that matters. Madame. Come on. Let's see how the protest is going. Falcon and Vimort arrived at the Place de la Concorde. The air is thick with the chants, shouts, and cheers of hundreds of protesters. A line of mounted soldiers stand shoulder to shoulder outside the entrance to Tuileries. Well, this is amazing. I had no idea the Second Republic had this many supporters. But of course. You didn't think that we were just a few animals huddling in a cave, did you? The desire for a revolution runs deep in the city. Everything's in place in the Palais Royale. Just say the word, and we'll set up the biggest barricade you've ever seen. Then we can all storm the building and drag that cocky king out of his chair. <coughs> There's a bit of change plan. We're, going, we're still going to protest, but we're going to do it peacefully. No firing from behind barricades, no violence, no capturing the king or prime minister. Madam, are you feeling alright? Quite alright, thank you. But what if you desire for better friends? You cannot achieve that without bloodshed. Certainly try. Falcon convince me. Falcon? Pacifism seems like the Christian approach, wouldn't you say, Friar? I see, so that's how it is. Excuse me, madam. I think the Friar disapproves of the new strategy. He probably thinks I've gone soft, and maybe I have. But I'm not deviating from this path, even if each and every rebel leaves my side. Don't worry, ma'am. You ain't alone. Uh, yeah, for the violence, madam. You might just drive for better friends. We'll always stand with you. Ugh, this stupid bullet wound. Damn things opened up again. What's the news, brother? Is everything in place? We have a problem. The Mademoiselle refuses to use violence. She's turned timid. Turned timid? How? It appears that the lawyer, Falcon, is something of a lion tamer. 
seems like that's probably an offensive term, but okay. Probably. JJ. <clears throat> JJ Falcon. That bird has proven to be more troll than the rooster, I swear. Brother, listen. If there is no violence, then there will be no power gap. Our leader will just peacefully replace. One leader will just peacefully replace another. We need chaos for our plan to work. <clears throat> well, I guess we have to follow through with our contingency strategy. I'll find the victim. You find the suspect. Don't push yourself, brother. You're still injured. Look at those scars. All of them. A lot of them. Mark my words, Paris, and every one of the petulant presenters will take the first opportunity to turn aggressive. They lust for violence. They don't look too violent to me. For us, me, this is just how the crowd looked before the July Revolution. Well, that takes one crazed individual, the whole crowd will explode into a frenzy. Hey, it's you. Brian, it's good to see you again. No time for pleasantries, Inspector. You needed urgently on the place de la Concorde. Why not just ask one of the officers and act of God do? There's no time to explain. Any minute now. Ah, do you hear that gunshot? It's already begun. Come on, Inspector. You must make haste. It's Buck, I really don't think this would trust me in a frock. He's a two faced wolf. Rara Remus so has provided me with a reliable information in the past. Trust me, that's it. Sparkle. This is enough for discussion, Sparkle, so I have a duty to perform. Stay put, I'll be back in no time at all. What? What? What should I do? What? Uh, now? A gold shot? It was near part two? So the friar was right. Violence really is an inevitability. We haven't reached that stage yet, madame. I can't afford to take chances. Not now. Piero, march the crowd to the Palais Royale and construct the barricade. Yes, ma'am! <clears throat> Fontaine, Falcon, you we're going to find the source of this disturbance. It came from here, Inspector. <clears throat> Hurry. Hurry. I'm moving as fast as these old legs well. Mondo, a body. A woman must have been the target of the gunshot we just heard. I don't see a shooter. I think the gunshot came from over here. Inspector! Falcon. Well, well, I should have known the Viridian killer would have had a part in this. Inspector, I'm not. Uh... What do we have here? A filthy cop and a dead girl. Madam, thank goodness you're here. I saw the whole thing. This poor, innocent mademoiselle is approaching the police line with her hands in the air. When all of a sudden, this brute of a police inspector yelled, You just don't care. No. Get back, you filthy rebel. She threw her hands in the air and waved them like she just didn't care. He drew his gun and shot the bird point blank through her heart. What is this nonsense? What are you praying on that about, Friar? Thank you for your input, Remus. It highly surprises me that a member of the police would be one to cast the first stone. I think we are being a little rash. Uh, let's just breathe, examine the situation, and... Uh... Wait a moment. You wear an eye patch. You only have one eye, Inspector. Observant. 
tell me, were you the policeman who killed the rat at Le Halls too? Le Halls, what are you talking about? Two incidents of a one-eyed policeman cutting down an innocent victim. There's no way this is a coincidence. We have here this filthy, corrupt individual who takes pleasure in oppressing the common citizen. Am I right, Inspector? I really shouldn't be surprised by this stupid rebel making stupid assumptions when it comes to stupid conclusions. Open your damned eyes, Mademoiselle. I'm not the assailant here. Don't call me Mademoiselle. Stupid, for that matter. Your guilt is plain to see. Given the circumstances, I to judge and execute you right here and now. Well, okay, you understand that, Gawking. Vouch for me. Fall <laughs> <clears throat> oh, good. <clears throat> Never seen him before in my life. Exactly the kind of cold, heartless response I expect from the Verde Killer. I'll see you in hell, Vulcan. Oof, this is going south very quickly. Uh, this is definitely the bad ending. Remus, uh, help me escort this invalid to Piero's barricade. I'll decide his fate there. With pleasure, madam. Come along, Inspector. <clears throat> Fontaine, Falcon, deal with the corpse. Meet us at the barricade when you're done. There's, uh, there's no way this was the work of the police. Oh, what, Falcon? I think you might be right. I always laid a gunshot as far away from the police line. It doesn't make any sense at all. Well, that's rebellion for you. There are best affairs. Sometimes it isn't to get caught in the crossfire. There's no reason for it. Uh, no use, darling. I'm gonna get the corpse off the streets. Not yet. I'm going to examine the body first. Examine the body. We agree that this wasn't the work of Inspector Lerty, right? Uh, there must be some clues on the corpse up towards what happened. An impromptu coroner's examination, I... Fine. Yeah, two minutes. After that, we'll head to the barricade, whether you're done here or not. It's a long shot, but maybe this girl is faking her injury. Just for the sake of thoroughness, I really ought to check for a pulse. Right. No, nothing. <coughs> this is the bullet wound, right? Uh, what can you tell me about it, Fontaine? Looks like the bullet took a fairly straight angle of entry through the mademoiselle's back. Are you sure it was probably standing right behind the victim? <clears throat> What's the bullet size? You know its caliber? Let me guess, you're hoping the caliber of the bullet is different from the caliber of the inspector's gun. That would conveniently get the one eyed police officer off the hook, wouldn't it? I'm afraid I can't help you. I can't possibly know a bullet's caliber without having a good look at the bullet itself. As you can plainly see, the bullet is three, enemy, three centimeters deep in the flesh. So, you need to see the bullet itself. Help me retrieve the bullet. Help me retrieve the bullet, Fontaine. Retrieve? You may dig it out. I assume you have a little more experience in this area than I do? Well, you're not wrong there. Fine, this will only take a moment. Mm. Oh, yummy. 
<laughs> there you go, one used bullet. Looks like a standard lead rifle or pistol ball, but I'm afraid I can't tell you its caliber. Why is that? The bullet fragment upon impact makes you I gather up all the pieces, but I cannot assess its diameter with any accuracy. Well, I would guess that was 13 to 17 millimeters. So I got be more specific. That's an enormous help. Thank you more. Everyone's been so fixated on who did this that nobody stopped to ask who this girl was. Uh, no, I'm not sure. I'm not close, but just another working girl. Mm, just another? I don't mean to sound glad, but it's true. This is one mademoiselle among the thousands who live in Paris. Who is she? Where does she work? A uh, family misser. I don't know, but I'm not right. I don't think anybody will care. I care. I, I care. I can't afford not to. I don't know who this mademoiselle was, but I'm going to see that justice is brought about for her death. And what's this mark? It almost looks like a, a handprint made in blood. Probably mademoiselle's. No, I don't think so. It's a handprint on the left hand on the there. There's no way a person could comfortably reach that spot on their own back. I suppose so, but if the handprint doesn't belong to the girl, then who does it belong to? The murderer, it has to be. Given uh, the question on my mind is, what is a handprint of made in blood? Did the murderer sell their hands, girl, shot wound? Or were they injured prior to the shooting? There's so much to uncover here. No time to throw in the Okay, let's go. I'm, I'm done here. Uh, good, let's move this body out the street. I must hurry to the Palais Royal. Ellipses. Rest in peace, mademoiselle. I'll see you at that just done. Everything is going just as planned. Madam's probably fuming right now. She'll attack the pa she'll attack the Palais Royal. The Prime Minister will flee, and then. Excuse me, Monsieur. What do you want? I'm busy. Don't you recognize me, Monsieur? My disguises are a little more complex than yours, but I assumed you would recognize Prince Juan when you saw him. You're Prince Juan. Indeed. And you're Judge Romulus, the corrupt wolf. I know what you did. You tried to assassinate the king. You shot the corrupt ones here. And just moments ago, I saw you murder a maiden at the Place de la Concorde. You truly are a vile individual, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if you have any proof for any of that stuff. I'm out of here. You also know that you're ha one half of the Viridian killer? On any other day, I would gut you where you stand, Fox. But as it happens, I'm a little busy today. Oh, the Viridian killer is too busy to kill me. Is that the truth, or is that bullet wound of yours starting to affect your prowess? You must have lost an awful lot of blood. What do I do? What do I do? Oh, hello, Monsieur Holmes. Ah, Monsieur Sparrowson, perfect timing. 
Who now? Oh, you're that fledgling. I guess this is what it's called being stuck between a rock and a hard place. I'm sure spell son be a deer and help me restrain the Viridian killer. This guy, he's the Viridian killer? Looks more like Judge Romulus to me. Uh, you'd be right about that too? Wow, so there's two scumbags in one. Alright then. Ow! Mind the wound! Where you're whining, Your Honor. Very nice takedown, Monsieur Sparrowson. You may want to check his pockets for weapons. He is something of a notorious killer, after all. Of course, let's see what we've got here. Aha, here we are. A pistol, probably the one used to kill the maiden, I suspect. What else can you find, Monsieur Sparrowson? Yes, I'm. Eye patch. Weird. Why would this wolf want with an eye patch? Oh no, this is bad. Very bad indeed. I won't get it. What's wrong with an eye patch? No time to explain, Mousy. What is it, Mr. Phelps? What is it? Put this eye patch to JJ Falcon. If my fears are correct, he'll be somewhere around the Palais Royale right now. Tell him that this belongs to Ramus's, Remus's brother. Hurry now. Right away, Mr. Wolves, right away! I must go too. I need to find the other half of the Viridian killer pair before something terrible happens. Wait, Master Wolves, what am I supposed to do with this guy? You have his gun, don't you? March that wolf to the nearest police station and collect your reward for capturing Judge Romulus. Strange day. Outside the Palais Royale, the rebels have constructed a makeshift barricade out of furniture, branches, rocks, and anything else they can find. From behind the wall, the rebels taunt the police and royal guards with chants. This is a situation in which uh, being specious would would have solved all the problems because it would have been like. Yeah, it was a policeman with an eye patch. There were a wolf. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, clearly it's not it's it's not Valerdi. That's know. all I had to Wol say. Literally, wolves and uh, roosters kind of look the same. And roosters just looks they, they look both so are similar. Multi-celled organisms. <laughs> This game was officially developed by aliens with just a passing nudge of, like, animal biology. They're all carbon-based life forms. What do you want from us? Like, it's... Aliens that don't have a sense of sight, <clears throat> they just, like, can sense the genetic makeup. <laughs> that would be terrible. Ah. Uh... I'm going impatient, pig. Confess your crimes. I have nothing to confess, you filthy rubble. You and your rubble friends, however, you should confess. However, should confess to 1,000 counts of trees and the public disorder. I will see each and every one of you hang to your flagrant disregard of the law. Your stubborn attitude is disgusting. A few days ago, you were seen in the halls. Witness saw you murder a beggar in blood. Today, a friar has testified to seeing you murder a girl again, completely unprovoked. I don't know why you continue to plead your innocence. But it doesn't matter. I don't need a confession to know that you're a killer. Madame Beaumont, stop! The inspector didn't shoot that mademoiselle. Keep your beak closed, Falcon. I'm done listening to your suggestions. Mm -hmm. 
This policeman is as guilty as every other monster in our decrepit justice system. It's my duty to execute him. Madam Falcon has uncovered some pretty convincing evidence. I would recommend you hear about. Please just give us five minutes, uh, five minutes, and I can convince you of this inspector's innocence. Five minutes is precious time. It's precious in a time like this. I can't afford it. But if you're wrong, are you willing to see another dead innocent? Thank you, madame. That was all I say about the Viridian killer. How humiliated. Quiet pig. Your life is mine until I say otherwise. Okay, first of all, let's recap what Frey Remus had to say. Wait, where is that friar? He's a key witness to this crime. He's competent as soon as he dropped the inspector off. Say he had some business to attend to. No uh, business? Like, uh, what? No, I was going to say, do you want me to voice him or voice I can him? Voice. You've been voicing a lot of characters today. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's okay, though. I'm having a good time. Man, oh man. Those barricades are looking pretty scary. I'm very duck, fear, very... For I am a brave duck. What? You did a, it's a good duck voice, good duck voice. I am a great officer bet. Handsome, intelligent, strong. Truly a fearless hero we remembered for. Hello, officer. Ah, you scared me, monsieur. Uh, monk? Friar, actually. Friar Remus. Listen, officer. I have something of great importance to tell you. I was just passing by the rebel camp, and I overheard a conversation. Oh, that sounds good. Do go on. They said they were going to launch an assault very soon, and when they do, they're going to rain hellfire on the palace. Oh, oh no. Just as I feared. Waddle, we do. Waddle. Waddle. Waddle, we do. Simple officer, as soon as you hear the first gunshot, you need to retaliate. Hit them with everything you've got. Every cannon, every rifle, every piece of artillery. Seems excessive. Yeah, agent of chaos. Don't leave a single piece of the barricade remaining. That is the only way you can be sure to survive. Ah, total annihilation. I like it. Oh, Friar, I'm confused. Aren't you a Christian? Yes, so what? <laughs> I don't know. Just that your idea doesn't seem very Christian y. Ah, I see. You think this is a moral issue. Let me tell you a secret, my dearest duck friend. There is no God, no overarching morality or higher plan, no heaven to save the righteous or hell to punish the sinners. There is only you, your artillery, and 10,000 rebels who want to dine on Pecking Duck tonight. Understand? It's kind of racist. Well, like, do they, they eat? In. I mean, they ride horses, so... Yeah, but... Do they eat God, steak? That's weird. That is weird. There must be, like... They're just regular guys. Again, I... Yeah, we've had this conversation once already, but it like, really must be like a Pluto goofy situation. Yeah. They just must be animals and then like anthropomorphic animals. That's still unsettling, but... It's very unsettling, yeah. Like, I wouldn't want to eat a Neanderthal just because like they're not as like cognitively developed as we are. Like, that's weird. I'm not sure that's the same comparison. Like, a Neanderthal is still probably further along than most animals would eat. It's closer to a know, monkey, man. I guess. I, uh, I wouldn't eat monkey either. Let me, then let me simplify. It's you or, it's you or them. 
It's me or them. Forget about the Friar Falcon. We all remember what he had to say. Present your case based on what you can recall. Okay, I will. But you may want to wipe that mouse off your shoulder first. Sorry, what? Uh, what? Uh... Oh, it's uh, you, Mousy. Monsieur Falcon, Monsieur Falcon, special delivery for an hour. Uh, thank you, Mousy. Uh, what is this? An eye patch. I found it in my clothing. Remus's his brothers, uh, this is an eye patch belonging to Judge Romulus. Uh, that's interesting. Where is Romulus? There's no time, you said. Just take it, just take it. I patch had evidence for I have to run, Monsieur, but you have to do your best. Monsieur Wolf says Paris and believe in you. Ferguson, you see Ferguson, how is he? There's no time, with you! Good luck! You quite done, Falcon? Very much so. Let's begin this, uh, trial. Okay. Okay. Maybe this is a good time to 